if someone here goes to visit and the altar of swim and it takes a goat to worship swim after worshiping swim with that goat leaves the goat there now goes back home and discovers that the goosey soup is preparing there is no meat in it he now goes back to the altar of swim and retrieves the goat um, that goat now is an accursed thing because it is already dedicated to a deity and the implication of dedication is that it, it can no longer be put to the normal use. It can only be put to the, a use that the deity that it is dedicated to prescribes. The moment it is dedicated to the deity, <laughs> it is only fit for use in the duty or in the description that the deity prescribes. If you pick it up and you want to apply it use it in a mundane way, you are going to have spiritual problems. The deity under whose hand it was released will contend with you. So, so when God gives you a harvest, he's expecting that you will not touch 10% of your harvest because 10% of your harvest is, is his. It's an accursed thing. Are you there? When we go into the Garden of Eden, which we are going to go very soon, you are going to see the commandment that God gave to Adam in the midst of the garden. He said, of every tree that is in the garden, thou shalt eat thereof. But the tree which is in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. They are casting. For in the day that thou eatest there, it is God that created all the trees. Are you there? It is in your hand and your power to use all the trees in the garden. But there is one tree that you will need to avoid. That's the principle of the accursed thing. If you are no longer interested in all the trees and your interest now is in the tree that I ask you to avoid, you will commit trespass in the matter of what? Of the accursed thing. So, are you there? So when you decide to avoid that which God said is a curse, it means that you have honored God. So God says, I'm giving you 100%, but 10% is a curse. It's dedicated. It's mine. When you now take 10% and use it for a mundane use, it means you have taken that which is mine and you have deployed it for use outside of my consent. You have committed trespass in the dedicated things. Are you there? And I'm going to show you patriarchs of old that were exposed to some circumstances, even in strange lands that was far away from home. They still maintained the principle of their custom and ensured that God had the honor he wanted to receive from his creation. Are you with me? So, Titan comes is one of the little items in the broad category of the accursed thing. When you give God his due, it is because you have an understanding that this one is dedicated. This is God's portion. If you violate God's portion, you are guilty of trespass in the accursed thing. So I'm going to show you several contexts and you will see that there was an understanding that the patriarchs had, such understanding that we need to imbibe in our time. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Okay. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accosting, and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff. It is not their stuff, even though it looks like the other ones. Do you understand it? You see, the 10% that you are supposed to give to God, it looks like the other ones. So if you put it together, it will look like your stuff. But from God's perspective, that which you have stolen, you have stolen, you have broken into my estate, and you have put some of my property with yours. This is a crime for which God allowed 3,000 men to fall 
in the face of battle so that this principle can be entrenched in the heart of every Israelite. They are cursed. Think. Can we go on? I'm, I will show you more of those kind of things as we proceed in the study. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. See, they became cursed because they did not lay to heart to preserve their cursed things and allow it to be for God only. So there is no way you can tamper with their cursed things and you yourself will not be cursed by doing so. So when we go to study Titan, you are going to see God is saying, you are cursed with the curse. The reason is because you are tampering with the accursed thing. When you, you make available to God that which is dedicated to him by his laws, by his covenant, by his commandment, it means that you honor God. Even though you had needs, but because your understanding was superior to your sense of need, you still give God his portion, meaning that you honored him in their cursed things, and you did not trespass into their cursed things, so you are not a thief. So many people have lived in the kingdom of God without any sense of responsibility, but it is difficult for you to do that if you are a Bible student, because you are going to see that the God of the Bible has ideals, the God of the Bible has principles, and if you want to profit from your relationship with him, you will need to subscribe to his ideals and to his principles. One of them is you must not trespass in the issue of what? Of the accursed things. Let me take you on a journey. Are you there? Take you on a brief journey quickly. Um, I believe the best of all the journeys that illustrates this matter most clearly can be drawn from the book of Genesis chapter 39. We'll begin from verse number 3. Genesis 39, verse number 3. And his master, this is talking about Joseph, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord had made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put, he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he was made, that he made him overseer of his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands and he knew not what he had. There was no need to take accounts because Joseph was a man of integrity. Save the bread which he did eat and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after those things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, lie with me. And he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master would not. What is with me in the house? He doesn't know what is with me in the house. And he had committed all that he had in my hand. And there is none greater in this house than I. Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, the accursing. Just like God gives you everything, then there is a requirement. He said, this one, you shall not eat of it. And Adam's first mistake was that he violated the principle of the accursing, so he did not give God honor. He said, my master has kept everything under my hand. I manage his estate. He doesn't even need to take accounts, do accounts. He has seen that his efforts to audit my activities is just a waste of time because the books are kept. The estate is enlarging. The hand of God is upon the entire enterprise because of me. It is only you 
that he has kept beyond my reach. Now, this is a patriarch. These people knew the principle of their casting. Meanwhile, it is, as an unbeliever, unbeliever mentality, you can say that, okay, if the guy has affairs with Potiphar's wife, do you know that she will recommend for his promotion? Maybe to even adopt him. Because in all the story of Potiphar, we're not told that he has children. So it may be that this is beautiful wife was barren. So he can press for adoption. And the guy will have is the status of an adopted, of an, of an Egyptian. But you see, the status he would have had is nothing compared to what eventually God made him. Any bargain that you make with Satan is such shortchanging your destiny and your potential. Joseph understood. He was the keeper of the estate. And that's how material and financial prosperity is. It belongs to our master and he gives you to manage. He gives you to manage not for yourself. He gives you to manage in order for his purposes on the earth to prosper. So you are a manager of kingdom resources. Just like Potiphar made Joseph the manager of kingdom resources. And in this management, there is a principle that you must not forget, which is the principle of the accosting. It is not everything that God is saying you can manage. There are some things that are off limits. Those things are dedicated things. They belong to the master. You will begin to have issues the moment you commit a trespass in the matter of the accosting. Don't expect that there will be a fair weather after you begin to violate the principles that protect the accosting. The next time you receive an alert of 1,000 naira, just know that all the individual 100 nairas, the 10 hundred nairas, they all look the same. Huh? But one of it is not yours. <laughs> Don't think about it. Just look for how to pay and keep paying. Nobody will supervise you. That's why nobody supervises Akan. But the effect of Akan's violation affected the whole nation. That they had to cast lots. That night, they, you know, Joshua was in the, in the temple. It was before the active evening. When he rose up from the place, they began to cast lots in the night to find which family this violator came from. That story in the book of Joshua chapter 7 is a graphic illustration of how that a man that violates the issue of their casting will never go unpunished. There will be a lot that will be casted. Lots in destiny. Lots in promotion. Lots will be casted. And you will be found out. No matter how hard you try to hide yourself, the curse that follows a man that violates the accursed thing is a bitter curse and it's like a, a laser-guided missile. It doesn't miss his target. You don't know how merciless reproach is. You don't know how merciless reproach is. You don't know how merciless limitations that are associated with lack of finances. They are merciless limitations. A man that begins to operate the principle of honor has come to an understanding of the fact that no matter how much he earns, a little disaster that visits the family can consume all of your salary in two weeks. Do you remember the lesson we learned from COVID? It means it shows us how weak we are. Because you just breathe in and you breathe out and then they say you are sick. So the air that you breathe in can become the reason for your sickness. The food you eat. People don't have food or you have. And then you ate the food and that's how your sickness came. The last time I went for, for, for check, medical checkup, the doctor told me, your days with coke, your marriage with coke has ended based on what you were seeing in the results. So even though I have money to buy coke, in fact, today I was offered coke and coke, asked my wife, coke is my drink. That one is black and it's sweating from the, from the freezer. Jesus Christ. There is a taste inside. Oh my God. That you will not find anywhere else. I was giving coke today when we went to the hospital. I looked at it, but you see, the doctor had spoken. Even in the issue of health, in order for you to stay healthy, there are accursed things that you don't trespass into. Such is the principle of life. When you violate in the matter of the accustings, there is a system of lots that will be casted. 
and you'll be found out. And your portion is going to be, there'll be evidence in your life that there is reproach because when the covering of God that should come under, come on men that honor God, when that covering is taken from you, there will be evidence that there is reproach in your life. Have you seen that the race is not to the swift? The fact that you are the most intelligent, are you with me? The fact that you are the most intelligent in our midst doesn't mean that the output of your life is going to be the best. It is the man that obeys kingdom principles and aligns with kingdom order that eventually becomes a recipient of God's mercy. And that mercy becomes the reason why he stands out. God will always fight to ensure that those that are in alignment with him stand out over and against circumstances and situations that be deathful people. Are you there? Now, he said, there is none greater in this house than I, neither had he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. You belong to him. You are dedicated to him. Your life is with him. If I touch you, I will be guilty of trespass. You are a dedicated item. He's the only one that can explore you lawfully. So even though you make yourself available for free, I have wisdom enough to know that this is forbidding territory. That's a man that understands the principle of what? They are costing. And God began to take me today from scripture to scripture to scripture. When you honor the principle of their costings, when you obey it, the reason why you obey it, in fact, that is an evidence that you honor God. Is that clear? And that's why we started with Proverbs, which says, honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruit, you know, that's tight, of all your increase. So what is the consequence? It says, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst forth with new wine. All right? If you are living according to the covenant, you will not be a victim of the economy. God will make a way for you. The blessings of the Lord, the Bible says, it makes rich and he added no sorrow to it. When others are crying that the economy is biting hard, you will be singing a different song because the hand of God is going to help you to sail. There is something called divine involvement. And it is occasioned by alignment to the commandments and the principles of God. It says, he has not kept anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against Potiphar? Is, is that what you have there? It is God that established the principle of honor by you and I not violating, not committing trespass in the issue of the accustings. So if I am refusing to violate the principle of the accustings so that I can give God the honor, it is not because of man. I'm doing it because of my understanding of God's law and God's way and God's commitment. Meanwhile, the woman in question here is an Egyptian that does not share the same philosophy that Joseph shares. Are you, are you with me? It was also interesting to know that when Joseph went into Egypt, Joseph had no Bible. Are you there? He had no what? There was no Bible with him for him to make reference and say, okay, uh, these are the things I should do. He was well taught such that he held the values of the teaching and the discipleship he received in a strange land where those concepts don't exist. Joseph became a, an instructor to the woman because the woman obviously did not understand the laws of God. He said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Are you there? So if you trespass in the issue of the accusing, you are guilty of two count charge. One is you are guilty of great wickedness. You are also guilty of what? Sin against God. A man that is guilty of great wickedness. If they throw him into a mob, 
he's not likely to survive. If the police, they say, okay, on Wednesday, he's told here. Friday, he's told here. Sunday, when people went to church, he looted three houses. And then the police now apprehends him. Wait for everybody to come back from church and say, this be the man that falls upon your property. Before they finish the presentation, you know what will happen to him. Because he's guilty of great wickedness. That's what happens when we violate, transgress in the issue of the accosting. We are guilty of great wickedness and sin against God. Are you there? Let me move you further. Let me move you further. Let me move you further. So that you become accountable. You don't need to preach to me now and say, can you pay your tithe? It doesn't matter the amount. It doesn't matter the amount. While I was still in the service, my allowance for housing was 15 million. Chief Dong, were you aware of that? My allowance for housing was 15 million. Did you ever see me rent house 15 million in this town? Good. I paid the tithe of that and more without supervision. Because Joseph said, the moment I sleep with you, in the eyes of God, I'm guilty of great wickedness. And what? Sin against God. He didn't even mention Potiphar. I was expecting somewhere that Potiphar's name would be captured in that presentation. But it has nothing to do with Potiphar. I am guilty of great wickedness and sin against God. So I don't need supervision to be told to give God his portion. Because some people say, oh, when you start paying tight, your salary is 30,000 and you pay tight. Your salary is... Um, is uh, 25,000 and you pay tithe. That is very... Okay. Your salary is 25,000 and you pay tithe. That's easy. When it starts becoming 1 million, 2 million, it becomes a big chunk of money. It's not the amount. This matter we are talking about issues from a state of heart. I pay tithe more than 15 million. Okay, how much is that? One, huh? One point five. Yes, I've, I've, I, I do more than that. You know, I mean, I've gone beyond the tight level because in the Old Testament the requirement was tithing, but in the New Testament the requirement is consecration. That means you and yours, what you are and what you have belongs to God. So God can come, come to me, and it happens every week. Are you with me? God comes to me every week. It's that frequent now. I say, give this person 500,000. Give that one. Because all I have and all I am is his. Meanwhile, you will not get to where I am if you don't start from titan. Titan is the old level requirement to prepare you for consecration. Before you gain admission into the university, you must have passed your old level. You got maths. You got English. The basic courses. And in addition to maths and English, you have... Three other courses in, in the preference of the discipline that you choose to study in. Are you there? So you must have been a master of titan before you can come to a point where the Holy Spirit will visit you and say, he does that every week. And I don't want to say some things on air. I can say them out, um, off camera. The actual statistics of what I have given this, where are we today? Today's what? Wednesday. So I start from last Wednesday to this Wednesday. I have the statistics. I'm good with figures. Right? Every week, God comes, say, here, there. I can be talking with somebody and it's okay. Then I'm not hearing the person. He just say, okay, make sure you give like that. So that's where I am now. I'm not on titan level. I'm fully consecrated to God. Property, I'm not a slave to property or a slave to coins. Jesus owns me and my coins. Are you there? That's where I am. And that is why there is nothing in heaven and on earth that God cannot give to me. Because there is nothing he can, he, he, he asks that he knows that I will refuse him. So there is nothing, nothing, nothing God cannot give to me. You want to walk in prosperity, I will tell you hard facts. You know, I don't, I don't like preaching it. Because I don't want to abuse it. It is in the Bible. But most of what is preached that is called prosperity is not balanced. You know, calm down. Calm down. 
Let's go into Bible study. You will find that most of what is preached is half-baked. It will lead you astray. It will make mammon your God. I have prospered by the hand of God. I, you, you are witnesses that I, I was in the oil industry before and I retired in 2020. My life is 10 times better than what it was in the oil industry. Meanwhile, when we started that job, we couldn't imagine anything greater than it. We just felt, hey! In fact, hallelujah. Are you there? Oh my God. One day I was talking with my colleagues. I said, I know one day God will come to me and ask me to resign so that I can do full-time ministry. Somebody just called me and said, come. My God just called. He heard it. He called me. He said, he said, sit down. Pastor, sit down. So I sat down. Then he said, this job that you are doing, how many people from your local government have this job? He said, just him. I said, I'm the only one. He said, okay. How many people from your state have this job? I said, we are three, me and two others. That means, imagine the whole of zone A, one. Huh? He said, if I want to resign, I should go to zone A, all, all the people in my zone, and tell them that I have one job eh, that is only me that has in the entire political, <laughs> the whole political district. I'll tell them that I want to leave. <laughs> when he said that, fear gripped me, and I told God, Kai, this, <laughs> this, is, this is the reality of this matter. But you know what? Before the time to leave came, God had removed the job from my heart. So it was a, 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 an easy thing for me to do. I had proven God much more in, and I could trust him. Ah, he had done some strange things. So when he said I should leave, I, in fact, the job was a burden, it was like sickness. So when he said leave, I said, hey, I, I resigned and came out. When I came out, God showed me that the job was nothing. And I was privileged to go to the bank in Abuja, one of those banks in Abuja. I saw one of my colleagues. Ah, that was when I knew that God had helped me. <laughs> you see, we were following God. We didn't know that. We, we don't know what is happening outside. We, Tony, you have to give people, everybody a break. Eh? Like some 18th of December, shut down. Let them go around town and find out. Most of you don't know what is happening. <laughs> Jesus. I saw my colleague. Anything you are experiencing now is not the best God can do. I went to preach in Lagos and a businessman just cleared his car from the port. The car still had, uh, you know, when you buy a new car, it has, the seats are in leather bags. Everything is in leather bags. The car had leather bags. Chief Don, can you relate to what I'm talking about? So, he now said, since I'm around, let them use that, his car, to carry me around in Lagos. So we wanted to take a flight. They now took us to the airport. Police people saw us and they just saluted it. Because they, there was no, they, among all the cars that passed there, no, there was no car there. They just... <laughs> Jesus Christ. So when we now opened the door of the car, they saw that the, the leather bags were still there. Ah, the hand remained up. It was an international flight, so we went and traveled. By the time we were coming back from that trip, God had visited that man and told him that that car belongs to that pastor. That's my white car that you are seeing. That's the story of that white car. <laughs> Nobody in my office has it. That's, that's where I'm going. <laughs> Nobody. In that my oil, oil industry, if you have that car, including the number one man in the estate, if the man has the car, he stole the money. In fact, I kept the car for one month. I didn't drive it because I was expecting him to call me and say it was manipulation. They, he's not sure of the voice that 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 spoke. So I don't want to start enjoying it. Then the call will come and say. It will be a very emotional situation. So I kept it for one month. After one month, when I wanted to drive it, I called him. I said, Oga, I'm driving down your car. He said, ah! That he has even forgotten about that. I said, yeah. <laughs> that I should stop calling him about that car. He has forgotten about it. What? So I knew indeed God had moved on his heart to release that gift into my life. 
And I don't need to tell you that I'm the only one that has it in Makodi. You know, I don't need to tell you that. In the wilderness, in the desert, is this, is this not the Makodi that they say nothing good comes out of? I am not, that parable is not true in my life. It's not true. Somebody was coming in from one country and he said, Pastor, name anything you want so that I can bring for you. Really, I didn't have any need. What do you want? I checked. There was nothing. In the market that they say, see, let us operate with principles. In three years' time, you will thank me. This thing I'm preaching, you will come to my office and say, Thank you. I have proven what I'm teaching you. I've left the realm of accustings. I am a consecrated being. My coins and my life are his. And God will never ask you to sow a seed to support somebody if the harvest is not in view. I have seen it again and again. Sometimes he will ask me to sow an amount in the morning and then in the evening, someone will sow the same amount into my life. He did that for a long time. So I now got the gist that what you give does not really live your life. Huh? And that in the kingdom, the way he runs the kingdom is that he walks through the liberal people. The man that is willing to give, you will discover that he, he will be the man that will always be giving. Because he will always be having. For the Bible says that a liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall himself be water. The man that is stretching his faith to give will be the man that will always be having. And so everybody will, still, will be resorting to him for giving instead of them to desire. Okay, um, how? There's another plane of life. It begins with recognizing the accursed things and operating in the principle of honor. Did you get that? Please don't forget, if you forget everything, don't forget this. Let's go to the book of... Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.